You're a bit noisy. And I've got three teams, black, yellow, but also I've got an assistant. Is it called Professor Lobster? Is it show or just put things in the you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was pretty clumsy. But the Professor Lobster show is about how buildings are built and sometimes how they fall down like that. And it's about materials. It's about stone and wood and glass and iron and steel and concrete and old buildings and new buildings buildings from the Stone Age to the Space Age. And this first programme's about stone. Not again. Now, in any good kitchen, you've got to use And this menu has stone on it, in tension and compression, it's got arches and buttresses. And that sounds a bit boring. What we've really got is stone engine carrots, arches and bananas, and the flying buttresses. Uh, yes? May I ask you a question? Why have you got an outfit on your back? Well, it could do, but it really stands for a learner. Learner? But you're a professor. You know everything, don't you? Do I? Heck no. I learn new things every day, just like you do if you ask questions. Remember, if you don't know, ask. Now, that'd be a really good motto for this show. If you don't know, ask. So remember, kids, if you don't know, ask. I've got a question for you, then. What's that? This stone you threw me, it's not stone, it's polystyrene. So when are we going to see some real stone? Ah, well, what we'll do is we'll go on a journey, and it'll be a little bit cold. Chilly. I'm getting worried about this professor. I don't think he knows what he's doing, or what time of year it is. Are you ready? Round we go. Where are we? Well, this is Stonehenge. It's just a load of dirty stones, though. Oh, it's more than that. This is a calendar. All right, then. If it's a calendar, tell me the time. Well, the time? According to my lobster watch, it's ten to two. But this calendar didn't tell the time of day. What it told was the time of year. This was to tell the, the seasons, and particularly to tell you when it was Midsummer's Day, because that was quite important. Let me show you why over here. See, c come and look at this. That down there is called a heel stone. Heel? Oh, you mean heel? No, not that sort of heel. It was helos, that's a Greek word meaning sunstone. And on Midsummer's Day, the sun rises, going onto the top of it, shines through these columns, and shines right through at the altar, which is in the middle of Stonehenge. Oh. Now, it's what is up of that stone, and the people who came to worship here, because this was like a cathedral, watched the sun fall on the altar. It must be very, very dry. Anyway, it was there in, in June, July, August, September, October, November, December, every month, it kept... What have you got there? Nothing. Oh, I see. Oh, how does they stay up? Well, they stay up because of the weight of the stones. That big tall one weighs 50 tons. 50 tons? Well, how come it doesn't fall over? Well, because it's dug down into the ground about two and a half metres. Quite a long way, really. It's about, oh, six metres high, and they're also connected together. Well, what's that? Well, th that thing? there, that little tooth up there on top of the column is the thing that would go into the socket in the beam. This beam, this one here, sat on top of that once, and originally, that one, you see, looks like this here. This is one of the earliest examples of post and beam construction, and modern buildings today are often built with the same principle. All right. Yes, even though this is 4,000 years old, you could say this is a stone. What was that terrible noise? Well, there are some modern buildings I'd like to see destroyed, but that's another story. What I want to do now is talk about the principles of building construction. And, come on, Al, you lie down here and sit on top of him, and what we're going to talk about is compression. 
When you build, you build with things that weigh, stone weighs things, brick weighs things, and he's sitting on him, and what's happening is being pressed downward. Will you organise one of it? Load some up over there now, Liz. Now, what we've got is a compression structure. The weight from this lad on the W is a foundation. The weight is pressing down on him. How are they doing over there? Oh, no. Now, if buildings could talk, they'd complain about compression. Remember, pressing together. But the other stress that's even worse in building is tension. Tension, that's the one where materials are being pulled apart. Now, how can we best describe that, Liz? Where, where are you? Liz? Here I am. Ah. Oh. Neil, Chris Craig, come and help me. Oh, you're going to get your own back, are you? Now, that's what I mean. A lot of materials like stone are very good in compression, but they're very weak in tension. Now, tension means when they're being pulled apart and there are stresses in buildings when they move and when they're pushed by the wind or with the way the structure moves, which stretch the material until finally it gets so far that it has to snap and the structure collapses. <laughs> Here we've got a model of Stonehenge. Remember, it was about six metres high, and we've got some carrots that represent people. They could be American tourists or Manchester United supporters. But what this is, is a very good example of a structure in compression. We've got this big beam at the top, which is held up by massive columns, and it's only got a very short span there. Now, if the span was bigger, if these columns are a different shape, the stresses on the beam would be very different at the top with a load on here. Imagine this was part of a big wall. There would be compression at the top, it would be being pressed together, and there would be tension at the bottom, because as this beam bent, it would be opening the bottom of the beam. It would be stretching it. And if I put a big load on the top there, it would compress this, and it would break at the bottom because of the tensile forces. No, it wouldn't. Oh, yes, it would, wouldn't it? Oh, no, it wouldn't. Oh, yes, it would, and I'm going to show you. Now, come on, Elizabeth, you bring me a stone, and we're going to give you our first kitchen demonstration. Now, this is a piece of real stone. Yeah, and it's heavy. And what we're going to do is put it in this device as a beam. There it is, sitting in. I think it'll break. Do you think it'll break? No! And we've got a point load in the middle, and there's one on there. Pass along. Thank you. This is five. That makes six. Eleven. Do you think it's going to break? No. I do. Are you sure it's not going to break? Twenty-six. 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 Very gently, so we're doing it properly. Twenty-six. Oh, well, I think it's going to be breaking soon. I was expecting it was going to break. Do you think it'll break? No. This stone doesn't want to break yet. Let's put it over there. I thought it was right. You see? With stone tension, bottom of the beam. It did break, and what it showed was that the stone, we couldn't build it. The best way to use stone. Look at the